Alrighty, let's get into this. So we've secured the wig cap with our T-pins. Yes, T-pins are used to secure the wig cap. They're used to secure wigs, hair pieces. This is that lace closure hair piece. It comes in different sizes and lengths. And what I'm doing is just trying to make sure that um, I secure this and um, I position it correctly so that there are no gaps in it. Um, so that it doesn't, and also just to keep it in place so that it doesn't come up as I'm working on it because I'll be stitching it down um, on each side. Yes, our goal is to lay this super flat. You want to lay it at the edge of the wig cap, but you want a little part of it, maybe like a centimeter or two, hanging off so that way you're not just met with pure lace. You want some baby hair hanging off at the end. And those shorter hairs that are about two inches or less, those are called baby hairs. So this is a lace piece right here. And um, human hair typically is um, attached to the lace by knotting it in the areas. It's called ventilation. Um, knotting it to the grids, the individual grids on the lace. So it's, I'm sure it takes a lot of time. Um, but anyway, you're gonna go ahead and secure the hair out of the way with a hair clip, a hair clamp, you know, a scrunchie, whatever you have. See how flat it's laying? So you wanna have needles and thread available too. Go ahead and knot up your thread and have your needles ready. I usually have about 10 needles or more ready for um, wigs, just so I don't have to keep stopping or for my sew-in. It makes it go really fast. Um, so you're gonna go underneath, you're gonna start underneath your wig and you're gonna take the needle through the wig the wig cap and you're gonna take it through the lace piece this is the lace closure piece so you're gonna just go over and under over and under you want your stitching to be neat and take your time sometimes I'll put my finger in it um, like you'll see me put my finger in it see like that right there and I do that to help decrease the chances of the thread catching a knot or getting snagged. Um, it's just one of those things. It's like a fail safe for me. I've, I don't know how long I've been doing it, but I know I've been, I've been doing it for a long time. But yeah, you just want to have your, your stitches hopefully the same size. You know, and you just want to put them next to each other, back to back to back as you work your way from left to center. Or I would say left to right. See, it's super easy. And the reason why I have tape on my mannequin is to keep me from growing. These are cloth mannequin heads. So I put tape on my mannequins to keep the needle from penetrating. It's like another fail safe. Uh, it helps me from grabbing the fabric uh, that's stuck to the, man the block head. Because if I do that, then when I try to remove the wig, the wig will be stuck. Um, yeah, if I, if I stitch um, through the blockhead fabric, then the wig, you won't be able to remove it without damaging it or without having to reconstruct it. And I'm not about that life. I've done that maybe, it took me one time to realize that you need some type of masking tape over it or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. You also wanna make sure that you, um, make sure you have the right size mannequin head. I have like maybe four going on five. I think I have like four. I have size 21, that's the average size um, mannequin head. I have a size 21, 22, 23, and 25. I think when I tried to order the 24, I couldn't find it. And also for those people who like their wigs extra snug, if you're not doing a lace, like a full lace wig, just like a standard dome cap wig, you can get a child size dome cap, I kid you not. Um, I will try to link those in the description. So I'll link the pins in the description and I'll link the child size dome caps and average dome caps too that way you'll kind of have oh, and the needles and the thread why not that way you'll kind of get some direction about um, what tools you need and how to get started but um, you want to make sure that as you go that you're not catching up the little flyaways that those are kind of pushed back and secured away um, from the edge of the lace and from the needle and thread because the hair will just be going every which way and getting caught and um, it's just, it's a nuisance to have to deal with those little hairs. But if you can check out what I'm doing, I am taking the thread again underneath and through the wig cap. 
and underneath and through the lace closure going over and under back to back to back and you want to try to lay the hair flat or lay the lace flat as you go make sure that there are no gaps or bubbles as you're stitching because the gaps and bubbles will make the wig sit funny it won't sit correctly it won't be flat to the head you have this part of your head that it just looks like somebody's blowing air up under it right up under that lace closure so you want that to fit so I'm gonna go ahead and take some scissors and clip far away enough to where I have enough string to go ahead and knot it and I just do simple knots like let's say you're gonna knot up your shoe strings your shoelaces you do the same thing so I knot mine's about you know no more than four times three times usually I knot it just like that and then I snip the lace or not the lace please don't slip the lace snip the lace you want to snip the thread you want to slip it as close to the knot as possible without causing it to come undone and without clipping the knot so what we're going to do now is we're going to work from this is our right side we're going to work from right to left we're going to work our way from the front to the center of the lace closure like we did on the left side we're going to secure any hair away we're going to put our t-pins down and you can adjust your t-pins if your t-pins are in the way be sure to move your T-pins out because you don't want to be sewing your T-pins down and sewing through them. That's going to be a headache. Trust me. I mean, if there's a mistake that, that can be made, I've made it. But I've also been doing this for about 10 years. So I know what I'm doing now. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead like we did the other side. And we're going to stitch. You know, be careful. Keep the flyaways out of the way. Keep the lace flat. So when you get really proficient at this, when you get really good at this, it's probably going to take you, um, I would say, if you have no interruptions, like let's say you're doing this on your free time. If you have absolutely no interruptions, you're not checking text messages, you're not texting Instagram or checking Instagram, you should probably be able to get done with this in 10 minutes or less, 15 minutes tops. And I mean... Some of those distractions are going to have to wait, honey. I mean, if you really want to know what you're doing, see how I'm pulling away those extra hairs. I'm like, get out of the way because, um, you know, they also get in the way when you're trying to sew down your tracks as well. So with these videos, I want to basically introduce you to everything that I can think of that I've done to give you a head start in cosmetology school or with your interest in doing hair. Um, notice how I'm trying to lay this closure of my knuckles. How about that? <laughs> Lay the closure as flat as possible. Um, and if you do have any bubbles, if they're not big bubbles, but very small bubbles, typically, uh, if you're on the right side and you're stitching, you can pull your stitching to the right side and that will help flatten out any gaps, right? But this is your first time doing it. This is just kind of a rough draft. Just trying to introduce you to it. Get yourself into the hang of it. Um, if you've never stitched before, you're learning how to stitch right now. If you don't know anything about lace closures, you're kind of learning about that too. You're learning about the tools that you need for a successful um, wig creation. Um, and this is just very, very basic. There's nothing super fancy about it. It's actually pretty easy. I have clients that come to me three, four times a year for their seasonal wigs or for if they got, you know, trips or parties planned, things like that. They want to look really nice and they don't want to do their hair. So wigs are a lot of fun. They're also good for clients who just have alopecia due to, you know, medication causing their hair to fall out or those going through chemotherapy and, you know, they just want to feel like themselves. Wigs are not, uh, for everyone, uh, but they are, you know, they're, they are for who they are for. And they're good for that. I know a lot of women that wear wigs. So I'm going to go ahead and knot this. See that little loop there? I got to work to close that loop up. I'm going to knot it a couple more times. And then I'm going to go ahead and snip the end of it with the scissors. And um, basically this is it. Um, so I, take, I took the clip off of the wig and so now I'm just going to make sure that there are no gaps I'm gonna give the lace closure a little tug to see if it if it comes up anywhere if it doesn't then we're good and I could go on to sewing in the tracks um, the next clip will just be the finished product if you want to learn more go ahead and contact me for customized classes one-on-one -on -one or group workshops I'm totally available my information will be in the description below as well thanks for watching